This is my extended version of the cult series. This was a topic that I briefly touched, but I didn't really expand on it more because it needed its own video and I kind of forgot about it. Um, so before you watch this video, please watch the the cult the cult series in order the way I had had it made. Um, there's a playlist on my channel called cult series and that has everything you know so that way you don't miss out on on the videos and things like that um there were there were two other videos by one of my friends um who really helped um expand the topic um of, of what i've been through all right so if you haven't watched those go and watch that because you won't understand the context of what happened um you won't understand like how i got here and things like that because it changes the the message completely and i don't want to um be redundant because you know that'd be too much that'd be too long of a video um but anyway i decided to to pursue this video by writing it down writing down what I was going to say because it's a lot and um, and it was just it was just helpful for my healing um, this wasn't this wasn't really anything well this isn't anything I've actually talked about in in a broader way or in a more um, detailed type of way because this has a lot to do with 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 my my abuse and how it made me see myself how it made me see the world that i live in you know sexuality and, and gender and and fear and uh, it's just like it's just difficult you know because like i was so young and having these limiting beliefs was like really bad and and it didn't help that that I got um, sexually abused in a verbal way by by my bishop at the time, which uh, you should go and watch the series so you can get an idea um, of of how things worked. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna read off what I wrote here and and I hope it makes sense and and the purpose of this video was was to help other people who who are her who were in a sim similar situation like mine or who are in a situation like mine um, the the limiting beliefs in Mormonism on sexuality are pretty awful, to say the least. And um, many, many people kill themselves over it. And it's, it's really sad. Um, and there's not help for, for people because the topic of the nat the nature of the topic is, is taboo. And, um, People, like a lot of people, just are not educated in sexuality or sex education or just having, like, the real truths, the real facts of this stuff, right? And so instead they get, like, religious indoctrination, which is, which is not, not accurate. <laughs> it's not accurate at all. And um, in this video, um, it's really just mainly about me being a female in, in this uh, patriarch uh, system. Um, but I think this could apply to, to other people 
in a general, uh, broader sense, if you could uh, relate, to, relate to me in some way. Um, I, I intend this video to, to help people accept themselves and to love themselves more. Um, and, um, and the aspects of them that, that are sexual, because that also needs love too. So without further to do, I'll start, I'll start reading off what I have here. I'm not sure if I explained this part well enough in my series. I was talking about my shadow with femininity and how religion judge anything uh, lustful or, or sexual or sensual and also put the blame on our sexual desires as evil. There is a scripture called, the natural man is an enemy to God. This was used an, as an example in uh, the cult that I was in. That our sexual nature is gross and should only be done and expressed in certain ways. That our sexual nature is, you know, it's imperfect man, human thing, and it's not godly or divine, basically. And that in order for us to um, do it in a way that is more godly and divine would be the way that the religion says it is, right? So apparently it offends God. So you, you know, you have to put crazy limitations on that anyway. As a, as a young female, I was probably, I don't know how, how I think I've experienced this feeling probably like around like 13, 14, but it didn't really, it didn't get really bad until um, after the, the sexual abuse happened and that just made it 10 times worse. But anyway, as a young female, this made me uncomfortable to be female, especially how the males are basically told in the church that their sexual urges and temptations were the woman's fault, and that as a woman, every part of her body is basically automatically sexualized by the male gaze. Um, you know, the topic of, um, you know, modesty and, you know, dress codes um, and supposedly that's supposed to protect us as women from, you know, being raped or sexually assaulted, and that's bullshit, because what we wear isn't going to protect us. We need to know how to actually protect ourselves, but they don't teach us that now, do they? Right, so because of this, you know, women don't have a way of protecting themselves, and they're um, typically not as strong as men, right? So we have to, as women, we have to grow up in a society where we are potential victims, especially because we're, we're weaker, right? Physically. Anyway, continuing. So boys who will later grow to be men will grow up with this mentality in the religion they are also taught to judge women and their beauty or their sexual nature are honestly just existing in a feminine form, in a feminine body. And the, females are not and the females are taught to be afraid of the males. And the males are taught to see themselves as predatory. And I was not comfortable with this idea that my body was something somehow shameful, something to hide. It's not just hiding from the males my age at the time when I was young, but also the older men, married men, men with children too. And that as a female, we, we are somehow like threatening other people's like faithfulness to their spouse and stuff. And, and it's a little bit strange, it's, a, it's creepy. It's, it's incredibly creepy. And I don't know if people have like fully like understood that. Like it's, you don't really see it in the religion at least. You don't really see it as bad when it's like your peers because it's like, oh yeah, we're all teenagers and this and that. We're all preteens, you know, we're growing to puberty, blah, blah, blah. And it's like supposed to be like this 
taboo, funny topic, right? But you don't think about it like you're young, but there's older people who will look at you that way. And it's creepy. It, it, it's creepy. And, you know, and it's still, it's still like, it's still wrong, right? Like, e either way, I don't, I don't want to see, you know, males my age like this. I don't want to have to think that way. I don't have to, I don't like the implications of that, like, at all. That's, that's uncomfortable. And it's scary. Anyway, continuing. And it is, and it's interesting that they tell us to be afraid of the men who are not in our religion, as if the men not of our religion are also predatory. I mean, look at me. I was sexually abused in a verbal way by the church's bishop. Religions has us with this deception that the real world is worse than the religious one. The reality is that they are no different from one another. Something else I noticed, too. Women will judge other women on their femininity as well and also feel threatened by it. So it's not just the males blaming and judging women. So it's weird we get this conditioning from a patriarchy system to judge the sexual nature in women, but at the same time somehow give more acceptance to all the males who apparently, according to the backwards beliefs of the religion, that they can't control their sexual nature and may become violent or inv invasive with their sexual nature um, against the females. And guess what? Now the females are judging other females based on the standard of women expressing their sexual nature or just some, it just feels strange. It's like, this is what they decide is sexual. This is what they decide is wrong. This is what they decide, you know, is, is bad and, and stuff and it, like when you make it taboo and you make it judgmental you make it worse you know I mean just look at other cultures around the world like there's different standards on what is sexual this is just like this is just crazy <laughs> it's just crazy you know um, like as a woman, it almost feels like no, no part of my, my body is, is safe. And even, even in church and even, you know, being, being like in, in church or, or in school, it's like I, I would always have this, this caution in the back of my mind, this feeling in the back of my mind, like I don't want to be looked at that way. And I don't want to draw attention to myself that way. And, you know, I, it's just, it just doesn't feel safe. You know? Okay, so anyway, it is like we are, we are turned against each other, turned against our own gender, and cut off from actually having healthy sexual education and sexual understanding and sexual self-esteem and uh, sexual expression in a healthy way. We don't get that now because of that. Moving on. There was a time I was either too young or too innocent to understand what sexual feelings and attracting was. I didn't know much or understand anything about sexuality I was very sheltered. So I had, I had gained religious beliefs on sexuality that not even I understood. So I couldn't protest or disagree. I kept my faith and I had actually thought I was asexual for a bit. Um, by the time I came to mind to understand such a sexual feeling, it was scary and confusing. There were already programs of fear on sexuality and growing up into a more immature feminine body and judgment and fear on uh, the males 
right? Seeing sexuality as such a big sin. And in the Mormon religion, they believe sexual sin is second to murder. Yeah, and that was, that was something I had internalized and that was very depressing for me to go through. Moving on. And the exclusion from the religion from the LGBTQ community. Eventually, I became aware of the feeling of sexuality. Next thing I want to talk about, allow me to explain how I gained a prideful identity in the past of believing I was asexual due to the religion, which, you know, at the time, if I don't know anything sexual, I don't know, right? But let me talk about the pride that came from this identity before shit hit the fan and before, before, you know, karma came. <laughs> karma came. Okay. So this pride was me thinking I would never have any sexual sin because I had believed at the time that I was not sexual, nor could I even understand it. Especially, I believed I was nothing like the sexual males I was taught to judge fearfully. The religion I was in um, made it very apparent to create a distinction between male and female and our roles and um, things like that. That the women are not like the males and the males are not like the females and things like that. Okay. So you can imagine my horror when I eventually figured out that I was a sexual being and that I have something in common with the things that I judged. And if you watched uh, episode five of my cult series, I go more into detail on how, you know, things just got worse over time. But I won't be redundant, so anyway. And, um, you know, so the things that I was judging was like having sexual feelings and instead of seeing it as something that's like a positive, I would see it as like a negative or like an, like an issue or like a gateway to temptation because um, the religion I was in wanted us to like practice, practice like abstinence only and, and not have uh, thoughts like these things, not have feelings like these things. Um, you know, and this was hard for me to deal with, you know, my, my ego, my identity, my judgment didn't like it, like, because now, like, my identity is having to deal with the reality of who I actually am, and I don't want to think that I'm like that, right? I don't want to think that I'm like the males that like have these sexual feelings or are like these people that have sexual feelings or are like these people that watch porn and <laughs> stuff like that. <sighs> I absolutely hated this, this whole thing. It made me hate myself. It's like, it's, it's, it's a bizarre thing. And I, I explained it also in part five of my series, but anyway. Um, all this judgment came to me as karma tenfold. And I have no way of fixing this. No way of, no way of fixing it. For some reason at the time, I had believed that the males were more like these sex crave dogs and that somehow the women were always like these potential victims. This is the black and white way of seeing how sexuality was portrayed in the religious world and men get an overly bad reps representation for being predatory over females, but females can be just as predatory. We live in a society where we as people are not safe to, we, we, we are people are not safe to be around other people, even among our own gender, but many women have, uh, I guess, you know, many people have internalized self-hate from religious indoctrination and 
its effect on culture like it did for me at the time. There's people that get raped and they get blamed for being raped. It's stupid. And they blame, blame it on things like the fucking clothes we wear. Do you think the fucking clothes we wear is going to protect anyone who wants to hurt us? If someone wants to fucking hurt you, they will. It doesn't matter what you fucking wear. Okay? And it sucks. It sucks that we don't have protectors in our society. It sucks that we don't know how to protect ourselves. And just everything is just so fucking backwards. And nothing, nothing makes sense. Like, no, nothing makes sense. And, and it's like we're just having to navigate, you know, the limiting beliefs from, from our culture, from the f fucking religion. And it's like, well, how do we even live in this world, you know? <sighs> okay. Moving on. When I was still very young in a cult, I barely knew anything sexual to make proper distinctions because I was not given any true sexual education. Instead, I got religious sexual education, basically abstinent only, only teachings and a bunch of fear and judgment and shame. That's basically what they gave me, acting like they were protecting me or keeping me safe from sin, acting like I was getting virtues and values, acting like they were doing some kind of great service and it's bullshit. Anyone who has any ounce of education, anyone who has any ounce of you know, seeing the reality of who they are would quickly recognize that these beliefs are stupid and harmful. And they do the opposite of what they claim to do. Right? This, um, hold on. Okay. This, moving on, this created a strange issue with me and how I viewed myself and other females where I didn't like having sexual aspects despite having them, especially, especially physically. Um, where I, um, of course, the, the sexual abuse with the bishop made it worse and I was taught horrible things about sexual sin by the religion and all the judgment surrounded with the concern was not possible for me to navigate this abuse and self-judgment in a healthy, healing way. So I was silent but deeply troubled. Um, as I mentioned before, in br very briefly in my part five of of my series, like I had, I had this experience. I had discovered like um, it was so strange to me, like like an arousal to the feminine form of the feminine body, and even at one point my own, which was strange and confusing. And I was like, what the hell does this mean, right? And like the implication um, of what this could mean about my sexuality was really confusing to me because like, what is this saying about my sexual nature? And I already have issues with, with this, all the sexual shit and the fucking abuse. I don't, I don't want to think about the implications, you know, of what that, what that is saying about me or what that is thinking about me or like, how do I interpret this? Because this is also my interpretation. This is my experience, right? And that was something like I had to figure out, but there was still fear there because like the, the possibility of, of me being, being somewhat queer was just not accepted in the religion or, you know, and it's like, and if that was a thing, I, I, I don't even know how to deal with that. Like, because at that point it's like, what, what, what the fuck, you know, like you, you don't, you don't belong, <laughs> you don't belong there type of thing. And I'm just like really confused and, but you, you need to understand like the context of everything. So, so it makes more sense. Okay, um, where did I leave off? Okay. So, so either way, it's like, I wasn't perfect and I wasn't in the box. And so I was wrong to feel that way according to the religion that I should never feel those feelings, right? So anyway, 
eventually later, like a long, 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 long time later, um, after I left the religion, um, and I had figured out that I was in a religious cult, thanks to a video that I saw, which um, made me realize, oh wait, I was in a religious cult, and I didn't know it was a cult. I, I left it because how bad it made me feel, but I didn't identify exactly what had ha actually happened to me, right? And how bad it was actually, and then it opened my mind, and I was like, oh God, like, I was, I was abused so badly <laughs> and and that was just like the psychological education I got from there but the the spiritual and consciousness abuse thing was was a was a crazy thing in, in of itself because that's something most people don't talk about but I spoke about it so that's great so that way other people aren't alone anyway I had figured this out, that this attraction or arousal towards the feminine body was an effect by the gross judgments I have been taught in religion. The karma from judgment was not punishment. It was to bring to my consciousness a reminder to release the fear of judgment and to love my body, love my sexual aspects. Embrace what is female. Instead of being afraid of it, hating it, hating having sexual feelings, the shadow I was attracting was showing me I am what I judge. The more I resisted this, the more it, it persisted. And this is why, no matter how many times I prayed, no matter how many times I've tried to force myself to, to suppress these things or to stop these things, it wouldn't work because I was hating myself the entire time. I was judging myself the entire time. If I couldn't accept myself, I couldn't change. And um, I was like fasting and, and praying and crying and can't sleep at night and just scared of myself scared of scared of what i'm going to do scared of you know i'm masturbating again or, or whatever it's just like like measuring my worth based upon this and then also like having to have these uncomfortable sessions with the, with the bishop and stuff like that like this is horrible Okay, the more I believed I wasn't sexual or not like those predatory porn addicted males, the more I had to come to terms with the reality. Karma was showing me the reality of my hypocrisy. Hold on, I lost my spot. Where was my spot? Where was I? I'm a little dyslexic, so I lose my line. Um... Oh, hold on. I'll find it. I'll find it. Okay. The more I had to come to terms with the reality, karma was showing me the reality of my hypocrisy and ego was making it impossible to love myself, accept myself, and to heal and to see things in a peaceful way. See myself in a peaceful way, in a non-judgmental, observing, compassionate way. I couldn't do that. Um, I was only then left with about how I felt, what I was doing, what I was enjoying that was sexual, what I was engaging with sexually, feeling good about it at the time, right, as I'm committing, you know, this sinful act according to them, and then feeling absolutely guilty and self-hating and depressed after, laying face flat on the floor, praying to God to forgive me and to change me and to make me not be this way and to make me whole again, worthy again. So that way, so that way it was like I, I wasn't dirty or messed up. But, you know, like I could be poor again, but, you know, the religion was never designed to heal me. It was designed to control me and to manipulate me and to bring me down into very deep shadows. Other, other horrible intentions. Anyway, 
I was all the things I judged because I didn't know how to love myself. The things we judge only become more powerful over us when we, when we judge. We judge because we don't know ourselves. We judge out of fear. We judge because we don't understand. We judge because we believe in duality and separation and division, which also has the quality of causing us to be more separate from ourselves. In, I think it was part, part two of my cult series, I, I, the title was um, s d s was it Divided from Within Unconscious Self-Annihilation. That's, that's basically what it's designed to do. Right? And um, I also made another video on, on faith and what that means. And I feel like this is kind of related here because a lot of people will, will create these faith-based beliefs based on judgments and the way that it molds us and shapes us and manipulates us into to feelings that are more lower vibrational. You know, we're indoctrinated to double down on these beliefs despite the fact that we're not benefiting from them and we're hurting more from them. They have these, these limiting beliefs on faith where it's just like, oh, blind obedience or, oh, it's all this pride or, or it's, you know, the success of pride or um, it's this, this worth, uh, worthlessness and, and all this fear and, and it just feels like it, like a tug of war and stuff. And, you know, I, m I made several distinctions on that video I made about faith. Uh, to see it on a deeper level, and not just on a surface level, the way religion would have us believe. And I, I wanted to make those dis distinctions so that way people can have a better idea and grasp upon how their beliefs are making them feel. And this isn't um, related to, to religion and religious beliefs and cult beliefs, but just limiting beliefs in general. I feel like that's something we can all r relate to because there's, o there's always some kind of limiting belief that we learned from somewhere in our childhood or from some kind of trauma, whether it's religious or not. Okay? Um, we judge because we were taught in religion that judgment was the only way to prevent bad things from happening to us and to prevent sin. I... I can clearly say with certainty like that is absolutely not true because I've lived and experienced the exact opposite of that. The religion made it this way on purpose to cause many of us to be deeply insecure and deeply confused on our sexual attraction, sexuality, deeply judgmental on a normal part of our sexual nature I can only imagine the issues this causes to people. The more they judge sexuality, the more sexual they become or realize. In some way, shape, or form, it comes back to them. They're willing to look at their hypocrisy. They're willing to look at that, which most people aren't. The shadow of this will grow, and the insecurity will grow, depending on the severity of the judgments there are and how one chooses to observe their sexual nature in a state of non-judgment or lack of. It will depend on the programming at the level of limiting beliefs. The lack of self-acceptance prevents us from changing and controlling ourselves and taking back our power. Bearing that in mind, this was my troubling experience in my shadow. With a better lens to see this now, this is showing me what I needed to work on the shadow work that I needed to work on at the time. I didn't know what shadow work was, but I know now that this, this, these experiences that I was having, these feelings I was having was showing me to enjoy my sexual aspects, accept them, appreciate them in ways that are healthy, non-invasive, and that it's okay if I don't fit the mold of what religion deems I should be. To this day, I realized that whatever it was I judged in my femininity, femininity was actually something that I loved unknowingly. 
about myself or wanted to, or wanted to love, and that what aspects I liked in females was also just something I loved in myself. And that I actually do have a sexual nature, and there's nothing wrong with that. My message is uh, don't feel bad about your sexual nature. It only makes it worse. I know that the majority of people who subscribe to these harmful, fearful, limiting beliefs of sexuality are, are huge hypocrites and are more likely than not being abused or being an abuser. And um, they will deal with, with the hypocrisy of that because of the law of karma and judgment. Um, since the topic of sexu sexuality is so taboo, many of us keep it to themselves. Many of us keep it to, our, to ourselves about their sexual sin. And in religion, they lie about the sexual sides of themselves to avoid repentance and confession. Everyone's doing this. There's, there's more people in their shadow than you think. There's more people, you know, doing sexual sin in the religion than you think. You know, I had thought that because I was just so innocent <laughs> and pure-hearted, like, I really thought that, like, I have a problem that's like a guy thing, right? And that was, like, weird. Or it's like, oh, the males in my religion, you know, we're better than that. We don't do that, right? It's, it's the people in the real world. They're worse, right? And... And then it's like, once I figured this out, and once I rec recognized, wait a second, like, I was just so sheltered and just so, you know, so believing, like, I didn't recognize, like, wait a second, like, if, like, just from an outsider's perspective, like, just honestly, like, no one is following these rules. And, they, yeah, they don't care. <laughs> they, they don't care. I, I'm, be, I'm being honest. They, they don't care. Many, many people aren't following these rules, you know, and it's just like gaslights me to thinking like I'm like this only person or I'm just like this weirdo or, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's like, like it just makes it way worse than it actually is. <sighs> Almost done. I sincerely hope we all can live in a society where we are healing from abuse and everything relating to sexuality. And we all can express our sexual nature in ways that are healthy and observed to be truly healthy. I care about what is healthy, okay? Um, again, this was a video that I didn't plan on making, but it, the, my thoughts kept coming back to this experience. Um, I didn't talk to anyone about this. I don't think I have. But um, if anyone is like, you know, ever confused or just like trying to understand this, like the way I understood it, it was just me learning more about myself by experiencing the pain and suffering of not accepting who I am. And I fully, fully embrace this belief of what I like in others is what I like in myself. And in a way, it's a compliment, <laughs> right? And, and I'm not as separate and divided as I think I am or from qualities or attributes that I like or that I appreciate or that inspire me. Um, and so I don't have to feel this lacking. I don't have to feel this shame. I don't have to feel this comparison. I, I don't have to, to feel that way. And you know what? I deserve to be comfortable in my own body. And I deserve to express my sexuality in ways that are healing and safe and healthy. I deserve that. Everyone deserves that. Everyone does. Um, we are so disconnected from our bodies, not only like health-wise, but like spirituality-wise, like sexuality-wise, 
um, our, our bodies can be like such a prison because we don't connect to the divine feminine nature of ourselves. The parts that, that feel feelings. The parts that are expressive. You know, and, and those, those aspects that are, that are healthy and powerful and healing and intimate. It really sucks how, how society has just, you know, abandoned the divine feminine. And I, I hope people find it, reclaim their own power, reclaim those aspects of themselves that they were told that are not lovable and that they overcome the limiting beliefs with good virtues and values and a clearer understanding of what it is that they've gone through and experienced. And um, because of the, the nature of, of the topic is just so taboo, um, I, I believe many of us do need like actual sexual education, like we need actual learning, like like actual stuff, not not this like bullshit where like no one understands what sexuality is or no one like ever, like no one understands how to be healthy about this thing, like no like all these weird standards and expectations and and bullshit. Like uh, we need like. We need like the real stuff, the grounded stuff, um, not this like arbitrary crap that's just trying to manipulate us and make us deeply insecure. You know, and it's it's not just related to to sexuality, but also just beauty and our own inner beauty. Um, It's, it's not fun to feel like an alien in your own body, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I think that's it for this video. Um, check my community tab. Uh, check the comments, because there's really positive comments on my videos, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, yeah, so the community tab, I'll post updates and things like that. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, bye.